All right, guys, um, now we're going to actually do a demonstration of this equipment. So in the previous video, we went through cabling it up, the Master Cool 69500 Recovery Mate, along with the 69000 Recovery Machine. And we're picking this video up where we left off in the previous video. Everything's vacuumed out, and our settings are the way that we were, uh, way we left it on that previous step. So now we're going to actually pull refrigerant out of a, of a unit here. So I'm going to take the low side port cap off this truck and the high side port cap off. We're going to put our high side coupler on and we're going to put our low side coupler on. Make sure those are both on there secure. So now at this point we're still reading a vacuum on the 69500. We've got our vacuum line just sitting here turned off here and here. These ports, excuse me, these uh, valves are open. These two valves are open. Our oil drain is closed. Our auxiliary port is closed. And then down here on the 69,000, we've left our inlet and outlet valves open. When we did the vacuuming, we had it on purge. So we're still holding a vacuum here. For this next step, we're going to turn it to recover. And then we had both of the valves on our... Um, cylinder turned off and we're going to leave those off for a moment until we open up the unit and then we've got our scale under there ready to go so now let's go ahead we're going to come back over to the unit and then watching the gauge here we're just going to start with our low side opening it up just until we get a reading on the gauge you see the gauge is going up now you don't have to crank these things down. In fact, you can sometimes damage things if you crank them all the way down. Just about halfway. I'm going to open the high side now as well. Again, just about halfway. And then I'm going to come over here to the cylinder and I'm going to open the vapor valve, the blue valve typically. Now this guy I'm going to open up all the way. Now with all of that done, we've got the, the machine is sitting in the recover position. We've got the automobiles system opened up. We've got our cylinder opened up on the vapor side. Now we can start the recovery machine, let it do its job. Now this guy works pretty fast. He's going to go all the way down to around, I don't know, the manual says around uh, two to four two to three to four, you know, something under five PSI, and he has an automatic low pressure shutoff. He's gonna stop. That's actually gonna give us the opportunity uh, to go back and, and pull the oil out to see how much of that we have. But at this point, we're just gonna let this guy chug along, do his thing. We'll come back and say, I don't know, let's see what we got here. Um, we'll come back in like 10 minutes and see where he's at. All right, guys, you know, if we zoom in here, we can see our refrigerant cruising through the sight glass. Uh, it's very easy to see because it's got a die in it. We can also check down here and see that we're still dry on our moisture indicator. It's light blue on the inner ring, so we're good there. If we come over here, we can check our scale. And we can see that we are you know, gradually adding refrigerant from the vehicle into the tank. And this just gives you, you know, just by staying here for a few moments, gives you an idea about the, the rate of recovery. All right, well, we're going to come back in about another five and see how it's doing. All right, guys, this is just another view of our scale in action while we're doing a recovery operation. You can hear the recovery machine there in the background buzzing away. We've currently got 19.85 pounds in the cylinder. We just went up to 19.90. And so that they, you get a very precise measurement of the amount of R134A that's being put into the cylinder as you do the recovery from the vehicle by using a product like this type of electronic cylinder scale. At some point, the recovery machine will shut off and that'll give us the final reading of, of how much that we've put into the tank. Of course, then to calculate the delta, you would have wrote down the, the amount that was in the tank to begin with, take this new amount and subtract it, and that tells you how much refrigerant you pulled from this particular vehicle on that particular recovery operation. 
All right, we're going to go on and uh, take a break here, let this thing do its thing, and we'll come back. All right, guys, we're just about to zero. Rather than let the recovery machine shut off itself, because I want to have a little bit of pressure in here to get the oil out, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off manually. And then what we can do is we can come back, let it continue going until it shuts off itself. But you want to have at least about 2 to 3 PSI, according to the manufacturer, of, uh, of residual pressure in order to get the oil out. And then you can close off these two valves, hook up a pipe, and then we can drain that off into our little container here. Now what we're going to have to do before we do that is very similar to the cylinder. We're going to weigh this container, then we're going to hook up the hose, drain out the oil, and weigh it again so we can figure out how many ounces or fractions of an ounce of oil that we recovered. So I'm going to go get a little piece of hose on here and I get a little scale for that purpose, and we'll come back. All right, guys, let's go ahead and give this little container a way out. So it looks like the container all by itself is 0.3 of an ounce, and with the cap, 0.4 of an ounce. So we'll just weigh the two pieces together, just so we have that data. And then we're going to come back over to the unit. I've put some hose on here, connected it up down there. I'm going to slide this all the way down to the bottom. So I can get this to where you can see it. Now normally you'd take this and try to lay it down a little bit lower. I guess I'll, I'll start maybe a little lower with this. And I'm just going to open up this valve here. You can hear the oil sound at least. In this case, nothing. Nothing came out, which is kind of concerning, but I guess it's possible that we didn't drain anything out on this particular, particular run point the machine has shut itself off uh, even with the machine at the shut off stage uh, there's no residual pressure there's still no pag oil that's been separated so part of the problem on this particular vehicle it's under repair is that it's lost some oil is what I suspect so we didn't get any but let's just continue on with the next step of the recovery so we're at zero here we're at zero down here we're going to turn the machine off and we're going to turn it into the purge setting and what that's going to do is get any residual um, refrigerant that might be inside the system itself. So we're going to go ahead and run that step next. Now it might be too low of a pressure for that to go, and if that's the case, uh, the manual does say that, that if you have that kind of a, a problem, you can turn it to the purge position, and that'll let it go. Now while it's purging out here, we're going to go ahead and close off our valves up here. And as soon as it finishes this purge cycle, we will be done. And once again, it'll shut itself off. And while it's going, we can take a look at the cylinder and see where we left it. So we can see that we're 20.75. It just shut off and finished the purge step. Just going to walk over here and shut the switch off. And at this point, we're done. We've recovered everything that we're going to be able to recover from this particular vehicle system. The next step will be pulling a vacuum on that system after we do the repairs that we need to do. So at this point, I'm going to uh, get set up to do that vacuum step. We're just going to presume we did whatever repair needed to be done. I'll get set up for that, and we'll show that vacuum out system, and that'll, that'll be uh, to the end of the demonstration. So let me come back in a moment. All right, guys, since we're at the end of the previous step, we're going to go ahead and close the vapor valve that we had open on the cylinder. To do the vacuum step on the recovery machine, we're going to put it back to how we started off with the inlet and outlet uh, valves in the open position and the center yellow position in purge. Up here on our recovery mate, just like we started the process, on, on, off, on, off, on, on, off. This point, we're, we're, we're ready to start the vacuum process and we're going to connect this line to a vacuum pump. 
Now before we actually make that connection, we're going to come over here and we're going to reopen our valves. Start with the high side, then the low side. At that point, we're all set to vacuum out the system. And come down here on the ground here, and we can see all we're doing is similar to one of our previous steps. We're going to hook this guy up. Get this fitting. Get him nice and snug. It might be short, just a little bit of slack line there. And then we're going to take our recovery machine and unplug it, because we're not going to need him to be powered up for this step. And we're going to plug in our vacuum pump instead. So at this point, we can turn the vacuum pump on. We can open this valve. And we can come over here and open this valve. Now you can hear the vacuum pump doing its thing. And now previously, we were vacuuming out our equipment. But now, we're actually vacuuming out the whole vehicle. And so what you'll do on this step, just like you did when you were vacuuming out the equipment, you'll run this all the way down on both the recovery mates gauge and the recovery machines gauge. And you can see there a little bit of a discrepancy between the two. But they'll normalize themselves out as we go. And again, our cylinder, both valves on our recovery cylinder are closed. We're simply pulling all of the residual material that we could not recover. The recovery machine can only go to so many microns. Now we have to take it the rest of the way with a vacuum pump, which is standard procedure and EPA approved. So I'll let this guy go until we pull it down, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, I've uh, let this go for 45 minutes, uh, pulling the vacuum on the system here. And at this point, I'm getting ready where I'm going to shut it down and, and make sure that it holds. Uh, 45 minutes is the bare minimum you should run pulling a full vacuum. Uh, e e maybe even 60, depending on how long you have the system exposed while you were doing the repairs. Now, after we shut it off, I'm going to come down here and uh, shut off our vacuum line here. Here, and shut our pump off. After you are, are done with... Um, letting it sit. If you find you do have a leak, I want to tell you a little bit about this. So if you find you have a leak, since you got no refrigerant in there, you're not going to be able to use a sniffer. So what I intend to do if I do get a leak is I'll use some nitrogen. This is just a, a pressurized nitrogen uh, canister here, or cylinder rather, and run it up to 100 PSI on the high side, and you can acoustically find the leak. You know, you listen for it. But uh, if you don't have a leak, you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to take this guy, and we're just going to let him sit here. Uh, we've run it for 45 minutes. We're going to go ahead and let it sit for 30 minutes, make sure that our gauge here holds. Uh, the other thing I did uh, in between one of these videos is I went ahead and popped this lens off and zeroed in the gauge here, like I mentioned earlier in the video, that it was off. So we, we took care of that. You can just get a little screwdriver you know, if you have this kind of unit, I, miss, I guess I'll show that. If you have this kind of unit, you can see underneath there's a little notch here where a screwdriver can fit in. And just get yourself like a, a small dowel or piece of wood or something so you can use as a, as a lever so you don't scratch up the anodized finish here. And you can pop the clear lens off and then you can use that little screw that you see under the lens to adjust it on these particular Master Cool models like the uh, 69500 we see here, as well as the uh, 69000 itself with the recovery unit. If we uh, are successful and we don't have any leaks, then we'll just go ahead and proceed to charge the system as normal. I hope this uh, helps you out on seeing this little tour of this equipment and seeing it in action. If you've got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. If you found this useful, please think about hitting that like button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.